Hello. This is a video about using the selection brush in Helicon Filter. There are two steps involved. First, you mark out an area that you want to do something to. And second, you do something to it. And in this case, I'm going to turn the brightness up in that area. So those are the two steps that we're going to look at in more detail in the rest of this video. I'm going to keep going back over here to the left hand side and clearing the history so that we keep coming back to the same place with the image untouched. The selection brush is in the retouching tab. And let's go down through the options for it. Incidentally, the retouching tab has a drop down menu, and make selection is the bottom one on that list. The first slider is Intensity, so I'll drag out an area, and at the moment the intensity is up full. I'll turn it down to halfway or so, and put another area down, and turn it down to a quarter or so. Now I'm going to change what's going on in these areas. I'm going to change the brightness. So I'll go to the Brightness tab. And down at the bottom right, there's a drop down with three options. And I'm going to choose the one Apply to Selected. That's the selected area. Now these areas here are known as masks. So I'm going to make the changes where the masks are showing. So I'll apply to Selected. Now, the masks have disappeared, but they're still there. But they've disappeared so that we can see the effect of what we're doing. So what I'm now going to do is to turn the exposure up. And we can see that the effect, the amount of the effect, is different depending upon how strong the mask was, what the intensity was of the mask, how deeply red it was. You can hardly see the bottom one, um, and the top one is very bright indeed. The middle one is somewhere in the middle. Go back to the retouching tab, and by the way, notice that as I move to any of these sliders, underneath the slider some things in blue come up. The left hand one here takes the slider to the minimum. The one almost at the right takes the slider to the maximum. If I put it back in the middle somewhere. The two upright lines take it to the default value, which in this case is right at the top. So if I click on the two upright lines, it goes to the default value. The minus and the plus, every time you click it, it moves just a little way. That makes it easier to do fine adjustments. It's difficult to do very fine adjustments with the slider. The second slider is the brush size. At the moment I'm using a fair size brush. I can use a pretty big brush and I can use a rather small brush. In fact I can make it smaller than that. If we go back I'll put the brush size back to somewhere in the middle. 
and then the brush hardness at the moment the brush has very hard edges if I put that to halfway down it's got softer edges if I turn it right down I turned the brush size down, that isn't what I wanted to do. If I turn the brush hardness down, it's softer still. Now if I go and change the brightness again, and say that I want to change the brightness down here at the bottom right, in the selected areas, and I change the brightness, turn it up, we can see that we have a sharp edge around the top one and then on the bottom we have a very smooth transition between where it's affected and where it isn't and it's somewhat intermediate in the middle one. I'll turn the hardness back up. Now at the moment this is putting down a red mark to show where the mask is and I can change that if depending on what colors you're working on on the image you may or may not be able to see that clearly so you can change the color so that you can see it clearly there's also a black and white pattern that you can put down again in some cases that may be preferable I prefer using it for some reason with red. Suppose that I wanted to select the whole of this beach area. I'm going to do a very crude selection to begin with. We'll see in a moment how to do this more precisely, but let's just pretend that that was actually the boundary that I wanted. To fill the rest of this in I can click on fill contour and then click where I want it filled in. And if I go back click on fill contour and this time click on that side it fills that side in. You can also have a contour like that and you can fill it in although interestingly enough it didn't completely fill it in I don't know why that would be now let's try and select the sky and clouds now there's a bit of a problem here if we take a close look that boundary is going to be tricky. There's fiddly little bits in it. And I can make the brush smaller. But even so, there's still fiddly bits. And bits in between the trees and so on. I could make the brush softer. But again, that doesn't really solve the problem. You can fiddle with these edges for ages if you actually try and paint it on. So what we want is some sort of automated way to let us deal with these edges. Helicon Filter does this by way of colours. And you've got two options. If we look under colour tolerance here, We've got this box down here, a little padlock, and a drop down which says select similar colours, separate two colours, and erase selection. So if we start with select similar colours, this box, if I click on it, it says positive colour, click to define it. So I'll click on the blue and it should now select the blue colour. The trouble is it's selecting all sorts of uh, the other stuff as well. Incidentally I'll turn the brush hardness up 
So what we want, and I'm by the way changing the size of the um, brush here by rolling the mouse wheel. So that's an alternative to going over here and using the slider. So at the moment it's not actually doing what I want, which is to pick the blue. And that's because of this tolerance setting, which is currently at 100%. If I put that down to, say, a quarter or so, we can now see that it's selecting the blue and not selecting the other colours. And... If I want to then select the clouds, I click on the box again. By the way, there's this padlock here, which I'm not sure why it works uh, or exactly what it does. Um, I found I run into difficulties if I don't have it locked. Um, so you click on it and it unlocks and it locks. If I notice that it's unlocked, I, I lock it. Um, so if I want to collect uh, to select the clouds now, I'll click on the little box with the plus in it and now click somewhere on the clouds. And it's, it's doing some of them, but it's leaving this little line. So what I'll do is increase the tolerance. That means that it will be less fussy about exactly what the color is. And now we can see that we haven't got those gaps between the areas and it's doing better now. There's still a bit of a, a line. The, if we have a close look at the boundary between the trees and the sky, um, now that's probably okay. There's a little bit there that needs doing. It's, I find it can be terribly difficult to um, to get these boundaries right. This isn't just in Helicon Filter. This is in any application, any editor. Um, and it's very easy to get left with lines. Suppose I'm going to increase the brightness of an area. I may end up with a line along the edge that shows up very nastily. Um, and sometimes I find I just can't get a satisfactory um, selection. But this one may be okay. So now I can do things, for example, if I look at the brightness, I know that the clouds here, I'll say that select, um, I want the what I do to apply to the selected area. These clouds don't have much definition in them. And what I might want to try doing is turn the highlights down um, to make those clouds better. In fact, in this particular case, because of the way the image is, it doesn't have much effect, unfortunately. In other circumstances, it might. What does work with this one, though, is if I want to um, put a bit more colour in the beach, what I'll do is to say that I want to the effects to be on the area that isn't selected. Now we can't see it, but what I do now is going to affect this, the beach and the trees. So if I go to the color tab and we've got some red in the rocks here, so I'll bring that red up a bit. So I'm going to click on a red area and that's put a little black line down here on this saturation spectrum and the spectral sensitivity one. So for the saturation, I'll increase the saturation in the red areas. And here we can see that it's increased the reds. And I could do something similar with the greens. That, For example, suppose I wanted to make the trees brighter. If I click on the trees to see what colour we're looking at um, and then brighten up the trees. Now as it happens in this case I didn't actually need to have made the selection in order to do that. But there are other circumstances where there may well be part of an image that you want to apply this sort of change to 
and part that you don't. The point being that there's no green in the sky and there's no red in the sky. So the th two things that I did wouldn't have affected the sky in any case. If we go back to the selection, as I said, it's difficult to get boundaries like this selected properly. And I used the option which was to select similar colours. There's another one which is separate two colours. And now we've got two, two of these boxes. Oh, and by the way, notice that the padlock, for some reason, has now come up unlocked. So I'm going to lock that. So in the box with the plus sign, that's the positive colour. That's the one I want to select. I'll click on that, I get the dropper, and I'll go to the blue, like I did before. In the other box, I'll select the colour that I don't want, so somewhere up here in the trees. And that may help give a better boundary between what you want and what you don't want. doesn't matter so much for the rest of it. Now there's the uh, white bits that I want. And I'll go back to the box with the plus sign. And this time with the dropper, I'll click on the white areas. And the green area, oh, it's now actually changed to black for some reason. So I want to go back to the trees and say it's the green that I don't want. And that's now made a selection. Now. It could be that I've accidentally selected areas that I don't want. And in that case, I can use the third option, which is Arrays Selection. And if I turn the tolerance right up to 100, everything that falls under the brush will, will be deselected. And I didn't do that very accurately because I've accidentally taken it back up here. Notice, by the way, that you can see what the effect is going to be as you run the uh, brush around. You make it have that effect by holding your finger down on the mouse button, uh, which I'm now doing, and that has the effect. But if you haven't got your finger on the mouse button, it just goes across, lets you see what the effect is going to be without actually changing anything. And that can be useful. There's another option here, which is to invert the selection. At the moment, I've got this strange area selected. And if I click on Invert Selection, it swaps it around. The other thing is, you may end up with a selection that you don't need anymore. And the drop down here lets you remove the selection. So you're back to having nothing selected. Let's now look at just one other example. Now here we've got some highlights that would be better if they weren't as bright. In this stained glass window it would be nice if we could see a bit more of the figures there where they're very light. So what I'll do is to say select similar colors and I'll choose that color but I need to turn the tolerance down and now it's selecting the brighter areas now the tolerance is probably too high. I'm going to undo that last selection that I did. Undo last retouching operation up here at the top right. Which, oh I did it in pieces. I'll, the next one across is undo last. Oh, that's got rid of them all. Now I'll turn the tolerance down and try again. And again if I run the... I'll make this a bit smaller. There I can see what that's going to do now. And it's still there's still a little bit coming up on the edges there. 
So if I turn the tolerance down, so, oh, and I've got the colour wrong now. I need to, on the little box with the plus sign, it had gone back to a brownish colour, which is why it was picking up the stuff at the side. Now, that's what it will be picking up. Oh, it's back again. Ah, because this is the unlocked and locked business. So I'll lock that, click on the box to get my dropper. And now that little box has gone to that very light colour, which is what I want. And now, yes, it's not picking up the stuff on the edge. It is only picking up what I want. If I move this down slightly. So if I now hold my finger down on this, it's doing the bright bits and in fact I could do these as well so now I can go to brightness say that I want to apply it to the whole to the selected areas and turn the highlights down it doesn't have a huge effect um, but it does have some effect I put it back again now and I'll turn it down and it's a fairly slight effect. I might try turning the exposure down a bit but that really doesn't help much either. So there's not a lot we can get out of this image, out of that window. If I go back and the other thing is that I might want to select these windows here so again I can go back to the retouching tab now I've got this selection over here that I don't want so I want to use a different one so I'll say that I want to remove that selection and then I'm saying select similar color click to get the eyedropper click there so that's the color that I want and put the tolerance on something suitable and then I can select and I'll select over here I'll now go to the brightness and it's saying you've already altered the brightness. Do you want to have another filter where you do different things to the brightness? The answer is yes, I do. So I want to add a new filter. Leave the existing one in place. Now I'll tell it that I want to work on the selected area. And I'll turn the highlights down. And I can't turn it down too far because if I do, I'll have a close look over here. If I turn it down too far, I'll get a nasty edge here, which will show up at normal viewing size. So I need to be modest in what I attempt to do with that. So there we have it. That's how you use the adjustment brush. Once you've selected an area, you can use the facilities on several of the tabs, everything on the brightness tab, the colors tab, noise, you can do noise reduction selectively and sharpening selectively. It depends on the image as to how effective what you're trying is. For example, pulling down highlights works better in some cases than others. In the examples we've chosen, it hasn't worked terrifically well, but other things have worked. You have to try these things and see what a particular image will yield in terms of uh, you trying to massage it one way and another. That's all for now. Goodbye.